Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. We've covered humidity basics, but before I want to talk about humidity devices, I want to cover adiabatic and isothermal humidification processes. So let's get started. Humidification systems fall into one of two process categories, isothermal and adiabatic. To turn one pound of water into water vapor, you need about a thousand BTUs of energy. That energy is called the latent heat of vaporization. Where that energy comes from is what defines these two different humidification processes. In the isothermal process, the energy for evaporating the water is supplied from an external source, such as by boiling the water. In adiabatic humidification, all of the heat for evaporation is taken from the air itself. Let's move this over and look at isothermal first. Isothermal means occurring at a constant temperature. In the isothermal process, the energy for evaporating the water is supplied by an external source. Typically, the water is boiled and the resulting steam is added to the air. When the steam is absorbed into the air, it has a minimal effect on the air temperature but it does raise the relative humidity. Isothermal humidification can produce tight humidity control, especially when there is tight temperature control. Now let's move this over and look at how adiabatic humidification works. Adiabatic refers to a process in which no heat is transferred into or out of the system from its surroundings. Microscopic droplets of water are added to the air. This can happen by using atomizing nozzles to spray water into the air or by using ultrasonic vibrations to generate and propel microscopic water droplets into the air. As the water evaporates, the air gives up heat. Let me make a little bit of room here. This lowers the temperature of the air and raises the relative humidity. This process follows the wet bulb line on the psychrometric chart. So let's pull this up and look at this on a psychrometric chart. So let's say you have 70 degree air at 20% relative humidity. So you would be about here on the chart. In an adiabatic process, the relative humidity might increase to 50%, which would bring you to this point. And you see how we moved along the wet bulb temperature line. Now, if we drop down to the dry bulb temperature, we can see that our air is now about 59 degrees. It has gotten about 11 degrees colder. So let's move this over again. Isothermal humidification systems are more popular than adiabatic systems for a couple of reasons. They are simpler to control. An isothermal system doesn't need the air preheat, water modulation, or reheat controls that an adiabatic system typically requires. And they're also smaller in size. The process requires a smaller heating surface in order to accomplish evaporation. And isothermal systems can be more cost effective to install as well. But which type of system you use depends on your specific application. As always, you can talk to your Norman S. Wright salesperson if you have questions about humidification systems. Let's pull all this back on screen. So that covers isothermal and adiabatic humidification processes. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.